It cannot be, Mr. President, that the economy is concentrated in few hands. The state has over two trillion budget per annum, which is largely spent on big white businesses. Thomas Sankara, who transformed Burkina Faso in under three years, was very clear when he said, we need to consume what we produce and produce what we consume. <laughs> South Africa is a destination of goods that are produced elsewhere. We are importing goods that we should, that we should be producing locally. We are even importing toothpaste. Honorable Zungula from ATM. Ma ditate eli tuba. Tibuli se inko keles tembe kileyo ze progressive caucus. There is this growing narrative, particularly from the right-wing parties who claim to be pro-constitution but are driving an anti-constitutional agenda. The portrayal of a progressive opposition parties as disruptors is fueled by anti-constitutional propaganda aimed at undermining the essential role of opposition in a constitutional democracy. Mainstream media has also contributed to perpetuating this narrative. Anyone who be, wants to build this country should welcome the opposition, particularly because they know the importance of having an opposition um, in terms of ensuring that there's going to be accountability. The seventh parliament must be the voice and defender of the people. As ATM are going to introduce bills targeting the country's pressing issues. The first is a foreign agents bill that will be sponsored to designate all foreign funded NGOs and entities as foreign agents. These NGOs and entities are actively in the, foreign, in, in the political terrain on behalf of their foreign funders who want to advance foreign interests in our country. This measure is crucial to ensure that domestic policies and decisions are made by South Africans for South Africa without undue foreign influence. By identifying and regulating these foreign agents, we aim to safeguard our sovereignty and promote transparency. The people must govern, not foreign-funded NGOs. There must be a parliamentary inquiry to investigate certain matters in our country. The first is the rent manipulation and unethical practices of the banks. Parliament, as a voice of the people, needs to investigate the systematic improvisement of our people by the banking sector. The George Building Collapse needs to have a parliamentary inquiry. 34 people died at George, and the country just kept it moving. The Sixth Parliament violated Section 42.3 of the Constitution by failing to scrutinize the conduct of the President on the Palapala matter. The, the Independent Panel Report has not been set aside by any court of law that report must be thoroughly processed by Parliament. The GNU hypocrites who wanted Mr. Ramaphosa to account before the elections might change their minds now that they are in cabinet. Ama weku weku, ama pitli pitli, ama mene mene, ama nyoro nyoro. It cannot be, Mr. President, that the economy is concentrated in few hands. Go to the Eastern Cape, majority of the roads in the Eastern Cape are built by H&I. The national departments spent over 8.9 billion on cleaning, gardening, and fumigation, and majority of this money got, went to Ubitvest. We, as the ATM, want to make it clear, Mr. President, that once we, as the lawmakers, pass the appropriation bill to give your government the power to spend, the money, to spend taxpayers' money and you sign it to law, you, as the head of the executive, must direct your government to spend a certain percentage on SMMEs. Your predecessor said it must be 30 percent. We say it must be 50 percent. The state must be the driver of economic transformation by strategically using its spending to create more diverse players in the economy. The state has over two trillion budget per annum which is largely spent on big white businesses. 
Thomas Sankara, who transformed Burkina Faso in under three years, was very clear when he said, we need to consume what we produce and produce what we consume. <laughs> South Africa is a destination of goods that are produced elsewhere. We are importing goods that we should, that we should be producing locally. We are even importing toothpicks. The local production of goods will industrialize the economy, create jobs, and grow the economy. Basic goods like soap, toilet paper, and candles must be produced in each district in the country. This way, the economy of the country will circulate amongst different districts in the country as well as different companies. Mr. President, the infrastructure is there. Go to Ekwakwa, Ekdua, go to Edimbaza, and Kangala Industrial Park. The factory's infrastructure is there. The market is there because people are consuming these goods on a daily basis. What is needed, it is political will to fund black industrialists to, open, to reopen these factories and create the much-needed jobs across our country. Government intervention is also necessary to direct the spending of goods like school uniform, stationery from, from small businesses, instead of having one company that is dominating that particular sector. If your child goes to a, a private school, that private school will tell you where to buy the uniform and where to buy the stationery. We are saying, Tina, the ATM, the government can equally do the same thing by redirecting the uniform from, the municipal, from all the schools in the, in the municipalities to be procured from SMMEs and cooperatives from the very same municipalities. These interventions, Mr. President, will create the much-needed jobs. Jobs are not going to be created by big buzzwords. They are going to be created by practical programs. We have an economy in our country whereby all sectors are dominated by between five and seven companies, and that leads to price fixing, low economic growth. Mr. President, the economy must be transformed. Do not fear to transform the economy. The apartheid government was Honourable deliberate member, when it was transforming the economy time, by spending on salary. You, Mr. President, Honourable equally member. do so when it comes Honourable to black member, companies. Thank you. Why are you shouting? Wow, another interesting one from Honorable Zungula here. Zungula is actually a member of the Progressive Caucus from the ATM Wink, and he's always in his debates. You see that he's always, uh, you know, progressive by heart, really uh, criticizing the government of national unity for being an uh, instrument of oppression, just like the same uh, rhetoric of the government of, of the Progressive Caucus anyway. Many of them still blame President Ramaphosa for betraying the, you know, black struggle of the ANC and that, you know, the ANC has lost its um, genetic character. And as a result, the Progressive um, Caucus has arisen to really restore the dignity and the fight for the majority of black South Africans who have been, um, you know, categorically and, you know, disenfranchised from the part of the cake uh, in South Africa. Many of them assume that, you know, the black South Africans, the majority poor, uh, you know, are living in squalor and living in really shacks in South Africa and townships while... Uh, many of the white South Africans, you know, and we know that the, uh, according to, I think it was a World Bank report, that 10% of um, South Africans control 80% of the economy. And so this is the Progressive Caucus really trying to push back that narrative to really stem a fight against uh, what they perceive as being an unequal society. And South Africa has actually been dubbed one of the most unequal societies in the world. And I really don't know how to how that can be negotiated, though how wealth has been monopolized in that regard. And a lot of progressive caucus members argue that the white monopoly capitalists have actually capitalized and own everything in South Africa. And it's difficult for, uh, you know, black business, for example, to really rise up and take a fair share of that capital because it's really guarded. And so as a result of that, the wealth, uh, you know, of South Africa is still really being um, reproduced by generations, while poverty is still also being reproduced across, across the majority of South Africans. So this is the basic fight of the Progressive Caucus. They are really gallant uh, soldiers in the parliament. I usually see their speeches, I, like I've been putting on this channel. And, um, you know, they are really resolute in their fight against what they call a betrayal by the ANC, or, you know, and um, black, white monopoly capital. And 
good um i really don't know it's a really fierce one but this is what we might be likely facing for the next five years the kind of pan-africanism new pan-africanism that seems to be building up from south africa and uh, having that you know mixed with the kind of pan-africanism that's against new colonialism we, we're seeing in west africa it actually spells uh and, and also the pan-africanism that's also erupting in kenya from the gen z protesters yeah, uh, it's actually giving a kind of a new face to the kind of pan-Africanism we might actually be seeing on the continent. But anyway, uh, that's that's where we'll stop for this video. What do you guys think about Honorable Sungula's speech here in this video? Share your thoughts in the comments.